Spider's Web. And we are going to be finishing off these two chaps. Right here. So, what do we need to do first? Well, we have our trusted Nurgling Green, which we need to mix up for the flesh. So we don't need a great deal of this, but we do need we do need a bit of it, but we'll be having much more um, screaming skull in comparison to the Nurgling Green, so yeah, so we don't need a great deal. And speaking of screaming skull, here it is. We'll be using this quite a bit, as always, for um, lightening up the colours that we have. The ones that we're going to be using. Um, because bear in mind we are highlighting, so we want paler shades of the um, the um, the paint that's already down there. So, so we have our colour sorted out, and then we just add a touch of water, just to make it that more fluid. And then we can start adding the paint, as always, to the model as to where the bright points are going to be. And you usually find those bright points on the face and the, the cheekbone, tips of the ear, the nose. This side is going to be much darker because it's in shadow the way um, the hair uh, sits and everything else. So what we do want is just that little bit here and there. There we are. And then the hand and arm, as usually happens, is we find it on the top is much paler than underneath. So we'll just do a bit of a bit of a dry brush, not a full dry brush on that one. And here we need it to be on the back of the arm. And that's where it's where it's showing. Um, on the edge of that little bit of a chunk that's been taken out, I rotted away, and then just the will do. Oops. I've gone off again. <laughs> Let me just adjust the camera. A touch, that's better. I find a place where I'm actually easy, um, what you call it, easy painting and holding the brush myself, and I find that that's the place where it's usually off camera. So, which is when you're trying to um, show people how I paint something. It's not the best place. <laughs> Never mind, we're sorted now anyway. Okay, so there's face, arms and feet done on that one. And we need the same again here. Again, as you know. In fact, where I've done a little bit of the highlighting on the other one, that is her, so I'm going to be going over that again. So, never mind. I've made a slight mistake on that, but it's all good. We can sort it out. It's not a major earth shattering uh, problem. There we have our. Um, flesh done almost, it's just the toes mainly in the back of the leg on this one and I want to say back of the leg, back of the ankle 
and that is really it for the flesh on this one. There's not much, as I said on the first video, and I apologise on the first video for going off camera so often. Um, I don't know what I set the camera at the right place, but for some strange reason it's dropped. So I don't know whether I just hadn't tightened up the uh, the hot shoe on the uh, stand I'm using. I don't, what, I don't know, but. Oh no, it had, a, it had dropped. Right, next thing I want to do is just use the bit of black. In fact, I'm not going to use a bit of black. I'm going to use a bit of rhino. In fact, dirt, no, not dirt flesh. Uh, dryad bark I'm going to use. I'm going to use dryad bark. And I'm going to go over this fella's herd that I made a mess of on the first bit of highlighting. Uh, I'm going to give this guy brown hair. So... This hair is going to be done again, and it's just to disguise that bit of um, highlight I did on the flesh, or what I thought was flesh, which turns out to be her. I'm hoping you can see that's okay. Okay, so that's that one done. Next we'll be having our, uh, let's do our t-shirts. Um, and which ones do we need? We need the Ungar Flesh and we need the Ratskin Flesh. Ungar Flesh for this one, Ratskin Flesh for that one. So, we can do the shirt on that one, trousers on that one. Okay, so let's rotate, spin that round so I can put some fresh paint out. And this is the Ungar Flesh. And same as we did with the Nurgling Green, we need more um, we need more of the Screaming Skull to the Ungar Flesh to make it much much paler than what is already on there so that it will show up as a highlights rather than um, that's what I'm looking for, just um, oh god my brain's not working now, what was I going to say it'll show up as a highlight rather than just another layer ok so let's Get this done and it's here we need it around all the little areas of um all these holes little areas of we need all over the holes um any word that seems to be jutting up a little bit like there for instance And it's just that's really it for the t-shirt there's not much in the line of highlighting we can do on this unfortunately but there we are now for the trousers of this fella I can do just that a little bit more with him um, there are quite a bit of holes and rips in his trousers, but I say you don't want a great deal of paint on your brush when you're doing this because you can actually almost get away with doing like a dry brush on it. And we certainly don't want much on this leg because a lot of it is covered and that's it
that's that colour sorted out. Next we have, uh, I'll say jacket. And the jacket of one is uh, the rat skin flesh. And it's the t-shirt of the other. So we'll do, we'll do that. We'll add the rat skin flesh. To the palette put the ungore flesh back in the box then we'll get the screaming skull out and add screaming skull to the rat skin flesh hoping very soon within the next hopefully Saturday I'll be able to make a start on the um, Ascension gameplay so that's in a couple of days it's the games club tomorrow night so I'll be taking it there with me and then once we've had a game there We've got a game going as a gameplay video and then see how things go from there. As I say, it's the it's a variant rule, it's not the actual way of playing that I will be doing. Um, for normal multiplayer rules it's slightly different. Um, but we will go through the variants together. Um, with it being um, make more with it being uh, as I say a variant I'll go through the particular rules before I um, before I play uh, explain exactly how the variant rule works as I understand it anyway and then later on in the games night video we shall have another game of it and show you how it actually how it normally would work but I'm looking forward to that one I've not played it for a while but I remember the one time I, one time I played I really enjoyed playing the game which is unusual for me with card games um, and Ascension and uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse are two that one that I, Ascension is one that I actually tried playing uh, with it being a card game I enjoyed and Sentinels of the Multiverse is one that I looked as though I would enjoy and it just so happens that I do I'm not saying that I've only had one game of it so far but um, more will be played in time and uh, I just saw from my last video that I posted I have the uh, four of the five mini expansions and I've had a look online and from the place where I got those from the fifth one is alright, uh, fifth one has shown up on eBay so which hadn't shown up the other day so I've ordered that as well so that hopefully will be coming very soon and that's another villain So then once that hap once that's come, I can then start looking at getting the the big expansions for the game. I think it's one that really needs on the expansion. Same with um, Ascension. There we are. That's really all I can get away with on that. And this, as I say, is the Steel Legion drab. I could actually get away with using the Talan Sand as the highlight colour for this but I want to stick with doing what I'm doing which is mixing the colours to suit okay and a little bit of water just to keep it a little more liquid stop it drying up too quickly well 
help to stop it drying up too quickly. And then we go over and go over the trousers, leaving obviously little bits here and there of the dark. When it gets down to the bottom of the leg, we can leave less and less, or we need less and less of the paler colour because that's, um, so that's the highlights, or we won't be having highlights with its shadow. So that's it, and that's about all we can do for trousers. And now is jack this fellow's jacket, which is again the Steel Legion drab. And we definitely need to go over his collar and down. Uh, and This is a very simple procedure, but it takes some practice, it really does. And then when you've practiced it and you realise how simple it is, you'll think, why the hell haven't I been doing this all the time? At least that's how I was about it anyway. So, as you can see, it's just adding a paler colour where you can see folds, where you can see it looks as though there's light hitting. And that's all highlighting is, just bringing out the shadows, giving it the depth that it needs to look right. And it's one of those things, sometimes you can get away with doing something very simple just as a quick stroke like that. Other times you really need to spend just that little bit more time um, sorting out the colours. No, not the colours, sorting out where the, the colour is going to be going. But, yeah, that's just showing the simple side of things. Okay, so, well we have one brown hair and one black hair. I'll use the Dawnstone along with, I've put it back off now. Use the Dawnstone along with a little bit, little tiny bit of Abaddon Black. Not much in there. I think I really need to get some more of this, I think. So we don't need a great amount of this, but we need a lot more of the Dawnstone. As I say, it's just the highlighting of the hair that we're doing here. We just need to make that black look less black. Unfortunately, I've mixed a little bit too much, well, pulled out a little bit too much black. Um, I think what I need to do is pale it down even more. And Dawnstone's not going to do it, so I'm going to be using Administratum Grey. So I'll give it a shake, and then. There we go. I don't want it as bright, don't the highlights as bright as Administratum, as, as Administratum Grey would be. Sorry my brain's not working didn't I? 
but I'm taking two different um, bits of areas of paint here okay and you'll see why in a second I'm going to wash my brush out dry my brush okay I'm going to take the darker of the two paints now onto the brush and just gently go over all the hurt as stands I'm going to try and get all the areas where I've caught it with the um, highlight for the skin I should have gone over the hair with black again but I forgot it so I'm going to do that I'm going to make it look as though it's a little greyer and then with the slightly paler come on with the, lot, with the whole lot paler rather colour there's not much of this, this one but as I said we don't need a lot of it because all that's going to happen is I'm just going to do a couple of touches here and there that is it yeah, that's one done the next one is going to be a brown her so what I'm going to do with that one is I'm going to take the Talon sand and use that as the highlight colour want a very small amount on the brush and then just waft over the hair, pick out on the highlights on the raised areas and there you go so that's those two done and there we are what I want to do now to show you what I've done with the others which is I think the one step that I haven't shown yet is the basing Okay, so I get a scraggy little brush, like so, and I mean a scraggy little brush, nothing special. This Dirk Earth stuff from Vallejo, I've got off eBay. Um, it's not too bad. It's a, it's, as I say, it's a, it's a paste. It looks really like gunk. So I'm going to put that to one side. I'm going to move that palette now because it's out of it's done with. I'll put that to one side. And then all we do is just get the brush in it. And put it onto the base. You don't want it too thick because they're in both feet and you want it looking as though they're walking in mud. Um, so don't overdo this one. You, it can, you can be as, you can put as much or you can make it as thick or as thin as you wish. But as I said with this one, I wouldn't go, go overboard with it, just a little thin coating of it is adequate if you put too much on it just looks wrong and don't just smooth it on just pat it on so that you get the texture there and 
there we are. And that's one done completely. So you wait until that's dry. You wait until that's dry before putting the other on. Or before putting the other on, before painting it. So I'll just go over this again. Just slap it on and then just spend a little bit of time spreading it out and spread when you're spreading it out, spread it out in little just dab it. Don't don't spread it as you would like with your paint. Just dab it on as though you're stippling something. That will give it the texture. As you can see, hopefully. If you get it on the feet, um, as long as it's not too heavy on the feet, it will look okay because it will look as though there's mud. It will look rather as though they've been walking in mud. And you can put a little bit here and there on the model if you wish, just like that. Don't paint that bit, just leave it to dry. And it will look as though there's mud on the clothes. They've got dirty clothes, they've got mud on the clothes. I've only done it with this particular model. But I'm just showing you that you can do that. Don't be... Don't be too uh, fussy. After all, it is supposed to be darker. These are zombies, so they will have been on the floor, if not underground, at some point before they became zombies. I just want to add a little bit more to this edge because it looks as though it's a bit it's too thin. But I'll say it's just with this stuff, will you think? Just do it until you're happy with it. As I said, don't don't brush it on. Try and stipple it so you get the ridges and the textures. I sometimes make a little design, you know. I sometimes do this di little spiral thing with it to break it up a little bit more. There you go. So all that remains for that one is to be painting it dark earth. And then dry brushing over, not dark earth, um, oh, Rhinox Hide rather, sorry. Uh, you paint it Rhinox Hide, as you've seen in other videos, and then dry brushed over with whatever dry brush or whatever highlight colour you want to use. And uh, I've done these three that the subject of the last video, as you can see. You get a nice texture on the base. There you go, and that's just using the Rhinox hide and then dry brushing over with a Screaming Skull. So we have all of the um, base set zombies done. We've even got the green ones done. They're in another. I think they they are actually in the box. I think. In fact, no, they're not. They're here on the table in front of me. So we have. All the base set of zombies completed. I'll just bring them all out so you can see them. Um, you're not one, you're not one, you're one of them. You're not one, and you're the last one of them. Okay, so all now the base set of zombies are complete virtually. It just leaves the two I've just finished. To dry. Then I can paint the base. I can varnish, put them onto a board. Varnish them all up. And then start playing. And there we are. Um... The next things we need to do is work out exactly which of the white figures in here <laughs> are from the, um, the base set. Um, so the ones that are down here now have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 hero characters down here. 
Um, they need to be done before I can start playing to be honest. Um, but I'm not going to be doing them yet because the next thing I want to do is the gameplay video for Ascension. So until then, I'd like to leave you with my usual little thought. Until next time, take care, God bless.